Are you trying to get noticed or get ahead in your career? Well, how you show up to meetings is one of your best opportunities to create a great impression. You're trying to create an impression that you're pretty strategic and you're smart and you're a good team player and a good communicator. And there's really no better place than in meetings to put that to the test. So how do you participate in a meeting in a way that's going to rocket your career? Well, three broad categories. So one is prepare, because I'll tell you, most of the folks sitting around that table or on that Zoom call, they have not prepared. And so they've lost an opportunity to show themselves as invested um, and uh, you know, thinking ahead, insightful, all of those things which are really positive for people's impressions of you come if you prepare and are lost if you don't. So first, understand the official agenda. What are the things that the person who's convened the meeting wants to accomplish? And how do you prepare in a way that's going to make you more valuable in achieving those outcomes? So do you understand uh, what the questions are? <laughs> what are you solving for in this meeting? Have you read any of the primer material? Do you know who you're supposed to be representing in this conversation? Are you advocating for certain stakeholders? If so, can you actually speak with them in advance so that you know their perspective? That's a great way to come at it. But in addition to the official agenda and making sure you're prepared for that, I really encourage you to think about what's your own agenda for the meeting? And no, that's not to say that I want you to have some ulterior motive or some shrewd way of taking advantage of the situation. But I do want you to give some thought to what do I want to get out of this? Do you have a developmental goal for this meeting? Do you want to demonstrate your executive presence? Do you want to show that you have a longer time horizon and are more strategic than everyone else? One of the ways I love to come at this is before you walk into a meeting, just ask yourself, what is one thing I could do in this meeting that I would be super proud of afterward? And that may be um, disagree with Frank, who's like mouthy and I usually just give in and don't say anything. If I could actually challenge Frank in this meeting, I would feel amazing. So anything you want that is supporting an effective meeting, you're not trying to be insubordinate here, but your own agenda for what do I want to do? What do I want to work on? What do I need to make sure I bring to this conversation? So preparing both by being ready to contribute lots of value on the official agenda and being clear on what's your own agenda for the meeting and, and what you hope to accomplish. Okay, second major point, balance. So balance in meetings is also something very hard to come by these days. And people who help create a balance in a meeting are so effective, so helpful. They stand out and that's what you're trying to do. So how do you create more balance? Well, uh, you know, most people in meetings are kind of on transmit. They're like, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> and they are talking all the time. They're probably interrupting. They're leaving very little silence after somebody else speaks. And you can create some balance in a meeting by doing less talking and more listening. Now, listening might not be something that people can see you doing unless you do that really good, you know, I'm curious head tilt. That's a good body language move. Oh, <laughs> but you demonstrate that you're listening by reflecting what other people are saying, by asking for clarifications. All of those things show, hey, I am right in it here. So a second way to balance is most people, when they do chime in in a meeting, they chime in with a statement. I think this, this is true. We need to do this. And another way you can balance a meeting more effectively is to uh, make less statements and ask more questions. So bringing more, I always think of it as more oxygen into the conversation. When, when we just throw more wood on the fire, it doesn't always actually burn brighter. Sometimes it just smokes and goes out. So more and more statements doesn't make a better meeting. But somebody stopping and asking a really great question that, you, you know, you can almost hear the crickets as everybody is like, Oh, <laughs> that good question. That is really going to make you stand out in a meeting. Third way to help a balance is that often we get this really 
unproductive, unhelpful dynamic in a meeting where everyone is violently agreeing with each other. Let me be the seventh person to chime in and say in my own words exactly what the last six people have said. Ugh, what a waste of time. So shifting from speaking when you agree to more frequently sh uh, speaking when you disagree, when you have something novel to bring to the conversation, when you want to put a little tension on where things are going, when you want to stop the freight train and say, have we considered this? Are we making this assumption? Where's a scenario where this wouldn't hold? So again, all the people who just kind of jump on the bandwagon and go along with this meeting that's got a lot of forward momentum, well, they're not very memorable afterward. But the person who said, you know, before I throw my hand up to agree with this decision, I would like us to spend a few minutes considering this potentiality. That's going to make you stand out. So second idea, balance the meeting. And that's more listening, less talking, more questions, fewer statements, and making sure that you're spending more of your contributions on putting tension, uh, adding novel contributions, as opposed to just like, me too. Okay. And then the third thing, you can help optimize the meeting <laughs> and our meetings so many of our meetings are not as effective as they could be and should be and anything you do to contribute to making the meeting a more productive and a more effective tool for collaboration on your team is a big win in your column so three roles you can play to help optimize so one is be a connector when I sit, and I sit in a lot of hours of meetings every week as I'm facilitating teams, um, I notice that points are often completely disconnected from one another. And it doesn't create a, a momentum or a flow in a meeting. I'm often thinking like, what? Like, how did that point follow that point? So if you can be someone who says, okay, if we go back to something that Lucien said, uh, you know, how does that connect to the, being a connector is a really great role to play to start to create alignment. Um, that's one way to optimize meeting. Um, another thing you can do, and it doesn't have to be you, your point or you engage, but you can be an effective communicator or, or bridge or ambassador between other people talking. So you may hear some friction starting to build up between two people, but you suspect it's because they're not understanding each other and they're kind of missing each other. For you to be, can I just take a, can I just take a crack at this? You know, I think what I'm hearing from you is this, and I think what I'm hearing, am I getting that right? When you help to actually um, moderate conflict so that it becomes productive, when you spot friction and help turn it into some kind of a productive tension, that's a great way to optimize in a meeting. Final role uh, in optimizing, be the closer. And the closer means don't let everybody just jump up and run out of a meeting without agreeing on, you know, what are we doing next? Who's doing what, for whom, with whom, by when. Um, it, also saying, you know, what else did we identify today that we should put on an agenda for a future meeting? Um, how did we do today? Do we think this was as effective a conversation? Were we talking about the right things? So when you take a moment, and you don't have to be the meeting chair to be the closer. When you kind of look at your watch and say, I, I'm noticing we only have five minutes left. I would love if we kind of paused and, and we don't add anything new and we just make sure that we stick the landing on all the things we've already discussed. You don't have to be the chair to do that. And being that closer is going to have a lot of people around the room thanking you for creating better clarity outside. So meetings, we do spend way too many hours in meetings and they are the main opportunity where you are on display to your colleagues and to your boss. So they are the chance to show that you uh, perform well, that you have lots of potential and do it by being more prepared, by helping to bring balance in many ways and by optimizing the meeting. So it actually leads to some positive outcomes. That's a great way to use your meeting time as a way to advance your career.